first I thought she was just smelling the stool, like what's the stool all about? And then guess what? She starts to climb the stool. I'm thinking there's no way in the world she's gonna do what I think she might do. Sure enough, climbs right into her cage and right into her water. I have never seen anything like this before. Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is amazing. It's a beautiful day here. It's sunny, it's getting warm here. Spring has finally set in, almost at summertime. And guess what? My girl Ivy, the green anaconda, not only is she on land, but she decided to destroy her cage. Look, there's leaves all over the place. There's leaves over there. She's kind of flipped around the log a little bit. She's pooped in her water. I don't know what this girl is up to, but she is uh, she's a busy girl. What I'm gonna do is actually go in there, get her out so I can fix her cage up. Uh, so let's just go ahead and get in there and get her out and hopefully that goes well. Hi, sweetie. I have no idea how I'm gonna get her. Uh, there you go. Come on, move on. There she goes. There she is. What an amazing snake, huh? Come on, big girl. Let's go. We're gonna go for a little walk, okay? So I can clean your cage up. Is that all right with you? There is something amazing about a green anaconda. She is one beautiful snake. There's no doubt about that. But it's kind of hard to get her out of here because she has a mind of her own, right? So I think I'm gonna be able to just kind of take her like this. Come on, baby. Woo. This is gonna be interesting. Woo. I tell you what, what an amazing snake. <laughs> I mean, she is so fun. So what I'm gonna do, of course, is get her on the ground, just let her kind of crawl around a little bit. I'll get in there, kind of reattach all her leaves and stuff like that. And then I actually have something really cool to show you in a little bit that will uh, clean her bottom of her cage. Someone actually sent me an email about a product. I bought it, it should be really cool. But She's obviously always on the go, this girl. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe set up a time lapse tonight, because obviously she's all over this cage, and uh, maybe I'll catch her and find out what this rascal does at night. I mean, let's face it, she's a big anaconda. She could do whatever she wants, but I'm excited because she uses every inch of this huge enclosure she has, and maybe we'll catch some cool footage on time lapse. So uh, tune in tomorrow, and I'll show you what we caught. But for today, I'm just gonna let her kind of wander around a little bit, get her cage all cleaned up, and uh, we'll definitely spend some time with her because I'm telling you what, anacondas are one of the most peculiar animals. I always talk about the fact that usually I can figure a snake out, whether it's a berm, a corn snake, a ball python, whatever it is, I cannot figure this girl out. She throws me for a loop all of the time. The way she acts, the way she moves, what she does, everything like that. So uh, it's it's pretty, pretty incredible and uh, been a pleasure working with what I think is probably one of the coolest snakes on the planet. Wow, what an amazing girl. So time it is, colubrid egg time. And we have a few clutches that are bangers today. I tell you what, I am pretty excited about. The first one is actually just a hat snow scaleless corn snake here. Nothing uh, wrong with that whatsoever. Bred to a scaleless snow, so it's absolutely beautiful. Not a big girl at all. She laid a really good clutch. But this next clutch that we're gonna pull, I, I don't know what it looks like yet, but it's it's gonna be amazing. So let's just go ahead and get these guys in the incubator box really quick. Really nice clutch of eggs for a small girl right here. She's got two, four, six, eight, nine eggs. Not bad. Again, het snow scaleless, bred to a snow scaleless. So uh, that should be pretty good, but uh, buckle up this next clutch is gonna be crazy. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about this clutch because I have never had a female scaleless corn snake lay a good clutch of eggs. Now, I haven't bred very many scaleless corn snake females, to be totally honest with you. I typically do a scaleless male to a head female, but this is actually a tiger scaleless bred to a tiger scaleless. You ready? Oh, oh they look good. There's a couple little bad eggs, but for the most part, they look good. There's two little sluggers in here, but look at this mama here. Whoo, doggy. That is a beautiful, beautiful snake right there. And I tell you what, although there are a couple slug eggs, I am very happy with the results of this one. So we'll just go ahead and pull these aside really quick. We'll take a closer look at the second. Just we'll clean this snake up. We'll get some water in with her, all that good stuff. She did really, really well. And again, she's bred to a tiger scaleless male, which is just a kind of interesting scaleless corn snake. So let's go ahead and take a closer 
a look at this. Again, like I mentioned, there's two little slugs, but everything else looks fertile. I'm gonna candle these eggs just because they look like some of them may have rolled around a little bit, to be totally honest with you. Just remove that slug right there. Get these guys over here. Let's see, one, two, three, here we go. And of course we've got two, four, six, seven eggs. Not a big clutch, but seven good eggs, two slugs. Tell you what, that's the first time I've ever had fertile eggs from a scaleless corn snake, so that is pretty awesome. Back to Ivy, now we have to get to the water part because the, the land part's all set. And remember I was struggling with just you know getting the debris out and stuff like that actually someone sent me a message and then an email about this product here which is called the pondovac uh, they have several different kinds i chose the pondovac 5 and basically the deal is as you can see right here you can literally stand up and you can it's almost like a pool filter but the difference with the say a, a shop vac a wet shop vac is that once it fills up it's done this one the water goes through it so it's like a continuous uh, water shop vac type of thing. That way I can suck up all the debris, not only in ivy, but the turtle pond, Bowser's pond, salt and pepper and stuff like that. And we can actually put it right to the drain in the back. Uh, I, I'm excited. I have no idea how this thing is gonna work, but I'm excited to see how it does. So let's just open it up and uh, hopefully it's gonna be a lifesaver. Ivy is such an amazing animal. I mean, I'm over here just unboxing this new vacuum thing and she just kind of curiously crawls up to me. At first I was like, what is she doing? Why is she crawling right at me? But then she's just kind of crawling around, seeing what we're doing, almost like she's curious about what we do. I've never had a snake literally come towards me out of curiosity, not out of like, I want to be fed or anything like that. And then, you know, next thing you know, she's crawling around, she sees these flowers and she's like just kind of checking them out. Like, again, it's about curiosity curiosity her brain is thinking right now and that is amazing I've never seen an animal so curious like this before so I've just been keeping an eye on her you know letting her crawl around and and I notice she's kind of crawling back towards her cage not thinking much of it at this point you know I just think she's wandering around and stuff like that and then I really started to wonder what was going on when she was checking out the stool at first I thought she was just smelling the stool like what's the stool all about and then guess what she starts to climb the stool. I'm thinking there's no way in the world she's gonna do what I think she might do and that's right she slowly inches her way up the stool looks at her cage she sniffs it a couple times next thing I know I'm like are you kidding me right now she goes and starts to climb into her cage even then I thought would she potentially back away at some point sure enough climbs right into her cage and right into her water I have never seen anything like this before yeah you think that snakes aren't smart uh, literally Ivy has been crawling around for about an hour hour and a half whatever the case may be she literally used the stool and climbed back in her cage by herself that was it she just crawled right up here climbed back in her cage so you tell me uh, that snakes aren't smart craziest thing I've ever seen I mean and, and you guys saw it man that is nuts we got it all kind of set up. The thing that's nice is this is the drain hose right here. And I actually have another 30 foot extension so I can actually just run this right to our drain and we can actually put like a little mesh bag on it to get the debris out. The thing that's also nice is the fact that before I used to have to put the shop back like inside the cage, we have lots of room now and kind of a long wand as well to get in here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and still just get in the thing with some shorts on uh, just to see how this thing works. But let's hope that this is the kind of solution to what I needed. Again, thank you for the person that sent me this email. Hopefully this thing is, uh, is the, the, the charm that I've been waiting for. So let's just go ahead and try this bugger out. I tell you what guys, that worked way better than expected. So thank you for the person that recommended that to me because uh, that is a lifesaver. I mean, 
in just a few minutes I was able to clean the entire bottom of the enclosure whereas it used to take me 15 20 minutes just to clean a little bit of it and I'd be in here for a half hour 45 minutes so wow what a life changer it is for sure so uh, I love it so there is another tool to the chest uh, that is gonna make my life of keeping you know we're learning our way through it that's what this is about right we haven't even had the reptarium expansion kind of going for more than two and a half months so uh, this was a huge 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 thing so uh, thank you again uh, wow my life just got a lot easier I'm kind of surprised there's no ball python clutches today. We have like four or five females that are due today, but like I mentioned, it sometimes happens where it takes them days after. Sometimes they're early, sometimes they're late, but a couple really cool animals, including this one that I'm really excited about. This girl has just always been kind of near and dear to me for whatever reason. And of course, this is the blue-eyed leucistic right here. This is the one that's produced like five or six years in a row for me. When I originally bought her, they were still like $50,000. So she's just a really special animal to me and uh, she should be laying any day. Just my daily check on Lilith here and Nova. First, I want to just see her, see if she looks like she's big and fat. Still looks like she's got some eggs in her. I'll also just check the nest box by just popping open. And if it starts to look like she's excavating it a little bit, pushing that around, that means I know she's getting close. She's not there yet, but uh, I hope that within the next week at the most, we'll get some eggs from these guys. I might have to dampen that box just a little bit more here in the next day or so, because I want it to still stay damp. But uh, Nova, you'd be good in protecting your little girl. All right, you guys have a good day. Cage is pretty much good to go. Uh, this girl is amazing. I mean, I never in my wildest dreams thought that one day I would be able to just mess with a big anaconda like this. I mean, again, it's an iconic animal, but the truth is, is that up until the last maybe six, seven years, most of these animals were coming out of the wild, believe it or not. They stopped the importation, I think about six or seven years ago, and those animals just weren't friendly. I mean, they came in, they were mean. Every anaconda I handled that was this size tried to bite me in the past. And uh, so it's amazing now that people are breeding, you know, second, third, fourth generation. And with that, it, they're breeding kind of tamer animals like ivy. So now you can literally interact with a beautiful anaconda like this. And you don't have to worry about it biting you because I'm telling you what, some of the worst bites I've ever got have been from anacondas. They have very big teeth, very strong, powerful bites. So you definitely don't want to get bit by them. But again, both Verde and Ivy are incredible animals. And it is such a pleasure to be able to just do this. I mean, it's, it's again, it's iconic, guys. I mean, uh, anaconda, and she's only going to get bigger, right? Here in another year, she's probably going to be another 50, 60 pounds in another another four or five foot, that is gonna be so impressive. And to have one that has the mentality like this, I mean, what an absolute pleasure of uh, her teaching me what the weird world of anacondas is all about. And then finally, we have this girl here, which is a really beautiful snake and bred to a gorgeous male right here. Let's take a look really quick. This, of course, is just a corn snake that is actually het for diffuse, but it's also het for ghost. And she was actually bred to this beautiful male right here. Of course, right now, she's in with this black motley female right now, but uh, that one is absolutely ridiculous. So there could be some really beautiful babies in here, and it looks like a really nice clutch of eggs too so let's just go ahead get these out of here really quick put them in here we'll count them up two four six eight good eggs not bad again a small female really nice beautiful clutch so clover season continues to bang here it's going to be amazing once we start hatching Again, I have never seen anything like this anaconda in the way she acts. I mean, for her to crawl back in that cage blew me absolutely away. I hope that you enjoyed it. As a matter of fact, if you did, here's an entire playlist of just big snakes like anacondas like this. You can also, if you don't mind, pay my podcast a little bit of love up here called Checking In. On this side, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Turn the post notifications on. Please have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone. I promise I'll see you tomorrow.